Today we're making 112 scale versions of this palette. You can definitely scratch build palettes out of things like popsicle sticks, but I find that it takes a lot of time and it can be a little messy with having to glue all the pieces together. So for a time efficiency, I like using these Dollar Tree palettes and just painting them up in a way that really looks good and believable. So I'm curious to find out if these palettes are actually 112 scale. And if you don't understand 112 scale, basically imagine one foot in real life, but as one inch in the diorama that we're making. The first thing I need to do is figure out how big this actually is in its regular one to one scale. It's 46 inches tall and it is about 40 inches wide. Now I'm going to use a digital caliper to measure the palettes. Based on the dimensions of the real palette, 97 millimeters by 84 millimeters would be 112 scale. This palette is just slightly more than that on the length and the width, so I would consider this an accurate 112 scale prop. My least favorite thing about these palettes, these two end pieces are unnecessarily wide. I'd rather them be like this, this width all the way across. It's almost splitting these down. I don't like that and I think it takes away a little bit from the overall look of these, but I feel like that's only really a problem if you're looking at it, you know, from the top down. So a lot of times when you're using a palette in an ACBA setup, you know, it's either going to have things on top of it like this or characters doing something with it like you see with Spider-Man back here. And so I feel like when you are looking at this in that context, you know, especially from this angle, you really don't get that impression that this doesn't look the way that it needs to. So I think it's definitely worth the trade off of the time save that you get by using these rather than scratch building them yourself if you don't have the desire to do that. The Dollar Tree palettes are great, but they look way too new. So we need to scuff these up and weather these up and paint them so that they look similar to this. There's some age to them and they're more interesting. I'm gonna weather these with a variety of methods. You could use sandpaper, but I'm using an 80 grit to 100 grit nail file right here. And then I move on to a wire brush. This is a metal wire brush that I got at Dollar Tree as well. Once that's done, I move on to my utility knife, cutting some scoring marks and cutting some pieces off of the palette with a dull blade. I don't wanna waste a new one on something like this. And in really no time at all, this is already looking a lot better than it was fresh out the box, so to speak. So I think that we're ready to move on to painting this. There are so many different ways that you could paint them. If you want them to be old and dirty, you could do that. You could paint them to look a little bit newer and you can really customize it to fit your needs. The key to this paint job is gonna be washes. So I've got a yellow wash, a black wash, and I might use a brown wash. If you've never seen me doing paint washes before, this is just straight up acrylic paint, cheap acrylic paint, and water. And with this first coat, I just wanna get good coverage of the whole piece. Let's just take a quick look at how this turned out after just that one coat of that yellowish wash. Next up, I'm gonna use a black wash to make this look a bit dirty. Now I have to admit, this is actually quite a bit thicker than the way I usually like my black wash, but it'll still work out. Some of the areas that I think more dirt would be in, I go over again with that black wash. If you want, you can go ahead and wet blend these if you don't wanna wait for these to dry between wash coats. I like to go in with the lighter wash again and make sure that I got all the areas that I might have missed on the first few, the undersides of some of these planks and the side of some of the planks that you see me doing here. Now I'm gonna use this brown wash in this spritz bottle from a distance and start spraying this on to create almost like a mud effect, like a stained mud effect on the wood. Here's a quick look of what it looks like after doing that spritzing method and you guys will hopefully think that this looks like it's been dirtied up over time and there's some mud spattered on there and that's really what I'm hoping for in this look. Then we just do the same exact thing with a black wash in the spritz bottle. Okay, so this thing looks extremely dirty now. Actually, more dirty than I wanted it 
to look at first, but that's all right because there's so many different ways that palettes, you know, look when you look at them. Some of them are brand new, some of them are disgusting. So this one's a little bit more on the disgusting side, but I still think I can make this look a little bit better by blending in the colors with some of that lighter wash. So let's try that out. I'm happy with the way that looks. So now I'm gonna move on to just sponge painting some black on top of the paintwork that we did with the washes just to give an extra little bit of dirt feel to this. And that's it. I'm done with these palettes and I think that they look really good. And I'm excited to show you guys how these look in a diorama display. I hope you enjoyed today's episode where we turned these Dollar Tree palettes into a more realistic 112 scale diorama prop. If you did like the video, please go ahead and subscribe to the channel and leave us a comment. Let us know what you thought of this project. What do you think? Do these look similar to the real thing? Let me know and I'll see you in the next episode. Vasco Toys, action figure dioramas and props.